Am I a daredevil? Uh, am I a playboy? You know, I like to play, so I guess I'm a combination of them. Racing is a thrill, you know, and we live in a society of rules and laws, but there's something about racing that takes most rules out of the equation and you can just go for it. I mean, Dad died when I was so young, I, I remember very little, very little of what he taught me. I guess similar to me, he knew nothing about racing growing up. It wasn't like he was a kid watching racing and always wanted to be a race driver. No, he was training to be a doctor at school. My father was very conflicted about being a racing driver. You know, he raced in one of the most dangerous periods of the sport, and he saw so many other drivers killed. And I think his mind was constantly at battle, saying, why am I doing this? He was the 1961 Formula One world champion, first American to ever do that. He also won Le Mans 24 hours, three times, amongst uh, many other great events. When he was 18, he was training to be a doctor at school. He said to his mum and dad, uh, I'm sorry, mum and dad, I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a racing driver and I'm going to be world champion. People really loved him. And wherever I've gone in the sport, and people who knew my father, they've always told me that, and there's always just been this really good feeling. So it, it definitely has been a help, but not a hindrance for me. The hindrance is, is the pressure. You know, a lot of people looking at me, a lot of what cameras pointed at me as what, one, two, three, four, five at the moment. And to go from that, you know, little country boys used to riding horses into this big environment where there's cameras all over me and there's media coming at me left, right and centre. And for the first couple of years, I didn't know what to do with it and, uh, and I couldn't, couldn't perform, I couldn't deliver in a race. I was quick in practice, but not in the race. And that's why I stopped driving in 2009 and then I only came back last year. I got out of racing for a while, um, and I started getting back into it, actually racing vintage cars, and, and mainly a vintage Maserati, which has been really exciting. I mean, and even though it's over 50 years old, I mean, it's got a huge engine, big horsepower. You, you're just arms and elbows sliding that car all over the place. So I just didn't know, uh, what is a modern day car gonna feel like? You know, to be out on, on a track with something like 20 Maseratis, um, when everyone jumps on the gas, it sounds great. I just found that it was better than I had been used to and was more approachable. Finding the limit was more approachable and the car was doing everything I wanted it to do. Well, these cars, I mean, it's a forgiving car, you know? There's nothing about it that I found surprising or evil handling. It's just, you can attack the course. You can read it well, it gives good feedback. I can really feel the car very well. Plus, it's got great power steering, which helps, because so you're not fighting the car. You're not physically, physically getting exhausted. And also in this heat, you know, if you've got a car with poor power steering, you're, you know, you're really going to struggle. No one's out there telling you to slow down. As long as you can be sensible and respect the other drivers, you can go out there and push as hard as you want. And uh, to me, there's nothing more exciting than that. When people start to tell me, you know, you've got to brake here, or you've got to do this, you've got to do that, that's when I start getting confused, and I, don't, I end up going slower, you know, overthinking. The best, I drive best when I'm forced to just use my instincts. You know, Dad was, you know, very, um, you know, maverick, just jump in and go. He was to an extent, but he was, st he was still very, uh, very professional about it. Having a famous father in the sport, it opens doors. But it doesn't guarantee you, know, you getting the sponsorships or you getting the ride. You still have to get in. You still have to perform. This is such a competitive world, and there's so few people who actually make it to the top. It's a high-stakes sport. I often think that I was born in the wrong generation, you know, born in the wrong era. Modern rules, modern life, modern attitudes. So many people are so blind to what's really going on. I don't want to be a member of the flock, the sheep, just all walking in the same direction, doing the same thing. I, I can't stand that. Um, I can't really understand how so many people do that. They go to school, they go to university, they get a job nine to five in the city, they come home, you know, they have dinner, screw the wife once a month, and it's so mundane, so boring, you know, I'd rather cut my throat. <laughs> 
I realize that I have the talent and it didn't go away and I'm enjoying it. It's right now kind of for me something I'm getting my feet wet again with it. So if, uh, if opportunities open up, uh, I may explore them. Get back into racing again. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. As long as it's not harming anyone else or harming myself, why not? This is what I want to do.